Hello there friends and welcome! For today's Pathfinder guide we have a very fun and unique Succubus Enchantress build. With this character you'll easily be able to manipulate and crowd control entire packs of enemies including demons into submission by either making them laugh themselves to death while knocked down on the ground or even outright stun lock them out of taking any action so they'll just stand there staring at you even after taking damage. Don't forget the highly powerful instant death area of effect illusion spells too. This time you'll be going with the demon mythic path, which is actually quite powerful for spellcasters too. It will allow you to achieve the ultimate DC possible, we have 75 plus with our enchantment spells, to ensure they always work even on unfair, plus the ability to have very nasty debuff auras that sharply reduce the save of enemies multiple times, many of which do not allow any resistance at all. Lastly, this character is not just about crowd control, as Demon will also let you achieve the best single target spell damage possible. Our Hellfire race can hit for more than a thousand damage per round without critical hits, which can go even higher. Each little stack of a Hellfire ray alone will deal around 300 damage, and we have three per round with the ability to cast spells as move actions for even more spell spamage and damage. So without further ado, let us get into our Succubus Enchantress Demon build. Alright, so as far as class, you actually have two choices. You can certainly go with Sorcerer if you want. It's just that for my previous enchantment character, the Fae Lord, I already did a Sorcerer build. I went with Overwhelming Mage for some higher DC. But you can go with any Sorcerer archetype you want including Seeker and even Sylvan Sorcerer if you want the pet. In the spirit of trying out different things, for this build I'll be going with something I've never covered before, Wizard and Thessalonian Specialist. First, as an intelligence prepared caster, you actually have way more synergy with the Demon Mythic Path, as I'll explain better during Mythic Progression. Of course you can also go Exploiter Wizard if you prefer, it's just that I've already covered it before many times. We'll be able to specialize into Enchantment as our Specialist cool, which is even called Lust for a Thessalonian Specialist, quite fitting for a Succubus character. Plus we'll still be able to get quite high bonuses to DC to make up for the lack of Sorcerer Bloodlines, even a special aura that will reduce the saving throws of enemies without any resistance. As a Thessalonian specialist into enchantment, you'll have two extra spell slots for every spell level that can only be slotted with the same enchantment spell. It's a win-win for us because we always want enchantment spells to easily crowd control enemies. This also gives you more versatility because you can then use the other normal spell slots to get damage spells and so on. Now as far as race, as I want to try something different, I'll be going with Elf this time, but you can honestly go with anything you want. From the mid-game onwards, this build has a lot of extra feats that you can spend on anything you want. Elves have... well, they start with a bonus, it's just spell penetration, which can help early on, but most importantly, later we can get a feat unique to the Elf and half Elf races that increases the DC of our enchantment spells by a plus one, so even better. Kitsunas already have this extra DC for free as a ratio, just in case if you want. For your racial heritage, be sure to go with basic. As far as background, you can go for the classic street urchin and pickpocket, or since we are an intelligence focused caster, there is also oblate and healer, because this will let all of your knowledge and lore skills scale from intelligence. My preferred choice is actually warrior and mercenary. As a wizard, you have very poor weapon proficiency, this grants you long spear proficiency for free. Long spears are rich weapons, which means your character can attack from safety even at melee range. And you might ask why bother going with melee as a crowd control character? Well, the reality of crowd control spells is that usually you only have to cast them once, right? That's enough to crowd control everything into submission. Assuming the battle lasts longer than one round, you'll at least be able to attack the enemies with a spear. Eventually, starting from the mid to the late game, you'll have more than enough power to highly damaging single target spells like Hellfire Ray, but that takes a while to get, which is why I like the versatility of having a melee weapon available for you, just in case. For ability points, intelligence is our main stat, we want as high DC as possible. You actually want to start with 20 intelligence, because this will later become an even score to one of the demonic aspects that grants further boosts to intelligence. 10 constitution is more than enough, we are a ranged caster after all, and even if you go melee you'll have reach, 
16 dexterity since we have a bonus from Elf. This will grant us higher initiative, a little bit more armor class, although it doesn't matter that much. I wouldn't bother attacking with ranged weapons with this build because they have a fit tax and we don't have the fits to spare early. Now for the other attributes, I would dump wisdom. It's not really needed and you have more than enough will from class progression. What you can do now is spend the rest of the two points, well, either into strength or you can even go for Charisma. I realize that Succubi, well, they're usually known for being Charisma characters, but like I said, I really wanted to try something different, which is why I went with Intelligence. Anyways, the choice is up to you. I'd rather have Strength just so I can attack if needed. You can dump Wisdom further to get 14 in a stat even, or you know, just leave it at like 9 Wisdom. For skill points, because this is an Intelligence build, we will have more than enough. Ideally, you want to start with Knowledge Arcana and World because they are intelligence focused. If you went with the Oblate and Healer background, also Lore Nature and Religion, but I'd get Persuasion and use Magic Device too. Even with low Charisma, we'll get a lot of bonuses through the Demon Mythic Path buffs and gear. For the last skill point, I would just go with like Lore Religion. As far as your level 1 feats, well, we are an Enchantress, so Spell Focus, Enchantment, and greater spell focus enchantment, for as high DC as we can get even early. For the familiar, be sure to go with hair. The plus 4 bonus to initiative is massive, especially for crowd control casters. After all, the sooner you can act, especially if you go before enemies, the sooner you can crowd control them into submission before they can react. For our specialist cool, like I said before, go with lust, which is enchantment. This prevents you from casting necromancy and transmutation spells, but it doesn't really matter. As far as transmutation, other characters can just cast the most important buffs on you. And you also have scrolls. As far as your spells, please remember that I already have two guides actually explaining the best arcane spells in the game from buffs, debuffs, crowd control, damage. So for now, I'll try to keep it short and simple. But anyways, Grease is a must-have. It's always needed, even if we don't start with spell focus into Conjuration. I'm afraid nothing is as powerful as Grease for the early game. As far as the enchantment spells, you want to go with Hypnotism. The thing is, some enemies are immune to enchantment, usually undead. For those, you'll have Grease early on. Don't bother with Sleep, Hypnotism is simply way better. The other spells are mostly going to be buff and utility. So Mage Armor, Shield, True Strike, Protection from Alignment. This can help early on to prevent charm and dominate, like let's say from enemies succubi. The other ones kinda don't matter. Might as well, I mean, pick sleep because you can. Then something like vanish. For deity, since we're going with demon, any that allows chaotic and evil alignments, Calistria is very fitting for this character, and then I would personally go with chaotic evil. For more spells, you can pick anything at level 2. Now, for level 3, we have to get started into the spell penetration line of feats. After all, we won't get any mythic spells besides demon ones, so basically almost everything we do besides the conjuration spells will have to penetrate the enemy spell resistance. For your first level 2 spell, Hideous Laughter is a must-have. It's one of the best early prod control spells in the game. Later through mythic progression, we'll get the best jokes, mythic ability, so that this can chain and pretty much affect all enemies at once. It really is a fun spell and quite efficient too. Besides that, mirror image, just in case for defense. At level 4, be sure to increase intelligence, which is what you want to increase on all of the other levels, for as high DC and spell slots as possible. For more level 2 spells, Glitter Dust is a must-have. As a matter of fact, I would rather get it at level 3, you know, from a scroll, or just learn mirror image from a scroll. Just like Grease, Glitter Dust is amazing for the early game. For level 5, Greater Spell Penetration. Remember that we also have an extra plus 2 by being an elf. So that's already plus 6 we have, just from feats. And speaking about feats, as a bonus feat, our first meta magic, Heightened Spell. Heightened is always the best meta magic overall because of how versatile it is. It not only increases the spell casts you have, each spell level will also grant you a plus 1 to DC. It really is a must have. For your first level 3 spell, sadly we cannot cast Haste because it is a transmutation spell. But you know, you have other characters for that. Heroism is nice since we are an enchantment character, but ideally at this level you would just heighten Glitter Dust, Grease, and Hideous Laughter anyways as far as crowd control. So I would then pick Protection from Arrows Communal, which can come in handy for chapter 1 and 2 as quite a powerful party-wide buff. For more level 3 spells at 6, Displacement, well, you can actually go for Stinking Cloud too, even if demons are immune, cultists, however, aren't. For level 7, because you want to enter into Lore Master, as soon as level 9, we need to pick the second feat to allow us entry into it. 
We already have a metamagic feat, so now go for a skill focus and then choose between Arcana or World. I think Arcana is more fitting for a wizard. As far as your first level 4 spells, Greater Invisibility, and you can actually choose Phantasmal Killer even early too. A lot of gear that we have will boost Mind Affecting, which works for both Enchantment and the Illusion Instant Death spells. For more level 4 spells, Stone Skin helps, and I would grab Sense Vitals now too. Now at level 9, be sure to enter into Lore Master. It will also make Persuasion and use Magic Device into class skills, so even better. For the other skill points you'll get as you increase your intelligence, you can put it anywhere you want, including in another Lore skill, since we are a Lore Master anyways, or something like Perception. Now, for your level 9 feat, go with Improved Elven Immunities, which is the Elven Ratio feat that grants you plus 1 to the DC of Enchantment spells. And well, the main reason we went to Floor Master is so we can grab a spell from the Cleric spell list, just like my Feylord build. In this case, what you want is the extremely useful Greater Command. When you choose Greater Command and the Halt version of it, enemies will be completely crowd control into submission. They cannot take any actions at all, not move, not do anything. They just stand there, staring at you. Even if they get attacked, they'll still remain under effect. This is what makes it so good. Sadly, you cannot slot Greater Command into your Thessalonian Enchanter specialist slots. So what you can do is, well, go for more metamagic hideous laughter, or in the case of level 5 spells, Mind Fog. Besides that, Stone Skin Communo is quite the handy buff. For level 10, I would rather keep progression into Thessalonian Specialist until we get 10 levels of it, so at level 11, for the last free metamagic feat. After that, I'll multiclass into something very fun, as I'm about to show you, but anyways. For more spells, you can truly pick anything you want, but starting from this point, the Scorching Ray spell is finally becoming quite the powerful one. At level 11, we'll get the Max Race for maximum damage, so pretty soon. If you want more damage, you can also go with Battering Blast. For your level 11 feat, Improved Initiative. For your last metamagic feat, Bolster Spell. This feat is quite useful when it comes to increasing the damage of your most powerful spells. For your first level 6 spells, Greater Heroism can be nice for this character because we have extra spell slots as a specialist. And we have at last the ultimate single target damage spell in the game, Hellfire Ray. Just be warned that it takes a while before the spell becomes really powerful, usually at level 15 and then 19. Now, for level 12, I like going for a dip in Sorcerer, so Sorcerer and Cross-Blooded. This grants us two bloodlines, which will come in handy when it comes to increasing the DC of our enchantment spells and also the damage of our fire spells. It is true that it will also delay the spellcasting progression of our wizard by one level, but you know, at this point, we already have almost everything we could want. While Cross-Blooded might be annoying for sorcerers because it reduces the spells, you know, we are just getting one level for the bloodlines anyways. We'll still remain with our wizard spellbook. Anyways, first you want the Fey bloodline. Just at level 1 it already grants you the highly powerful Fey Arcana, which increases the DC of all your Compulsion spells by plus 2. Compulsion is a sub school. I mean, almost all of the enchantment spells in the game are Compulsion, so even better for you. You also get a free bonus feat as a Sorcerer. In this case you want Persistent Spell. This will force enemies to save twice when attempting to resist your crowd control spells and take the worst result. For your second bloodline, you have two choices. My preferred pick is Draconic and Red. Just at level 1, you'll have the Arcana ability that will increase the damage of all of your fire spells, which is amazing for both Scorching and Hellfire Ray, since they roll multiple times, which means this will apply three times per spell. And yes, even if you are getting the bloodline as a sorcerer, it will work for our wizard spells. On the other hand, you can also go for the undead bloodline. The undead arcana at level 1 will let your mind affecting spells also work on undead who are by default immune. For your lone spell as a sorcerer, I would just go for either mage armor because you know, it's going to last 1 hour regardless, or true strike. Now, from level 13 onwards is when I would resume progression into Lore Master, for even more Lore Master secrets. When it comes to your level 13 plus feats, you actually have a lot of freedom here, because the reality is we already have the best spellcasting feats by far. So I'm going to give you a few options. Something I like doing is giving more melee power, 
to your character because, well, I enjoy the fighter mage playstyle and I like the versatility it gives you, but in reality this character doesn't really need it because one enchantment spell is enough to crowd control the whole enemy pack and then you can just burst them with damage spells. For that we have the classic martial feats. Well, first, martial weapons proficiency because this way we can equip the Death's Consonant Bardish weapon that has both damage and attack bonus scale from intelligence instead of strength. Since we have uber intelligence, even better for us. After that, you also have stuff like outflank, power attack, and later the improved criticals into melee weapons. Something else you can do is get spell focus now into illusion for the highly powerful instant death illusion spells. So spell focus now and greater spell focus later. I would rather skip this and just apply the ones we have from enchantment into illusion from a mythic feat later on. Now at this point, you can also go for the empower meta magic feat. The main reason is to give you more freedom and flexibility so you aren't as reliant on meta magic rods for higher spell damage. Anyways, as I've said, the choice is up to you. I will personally be picking the martial feats now because I really enjoy the fighter mage playstyle. So for me, martial weapons now. For more level 6 spells you can go with anything, although greater dispel magic is always good to dispel enemy buffs. And the other one is up to you. Even something like Siroko because we have a lot of bonuses to fire damage. For your second Lord Master's secret at level 14, well, you have quite a lot of different choices. Something I like picking now is combat feat and shatter defenses, so we have an even easier time hitting enemies. It also combos quite nicely with ray spells, because whenever the enemy is flat-footed, they'll also have even lower touch armor class. Well, I'm all about giving you choices, so something you can do is pick Improved Critical and Ray earlier. This can highly increase the damage you deal with Ray spells. You might have noticed that we also have the Trickster Special Improved Critical feats available here. I personally think this is an oversight, because the reality is they've removed these feats before. So the reason I'm not picking them is that I don't want this build to become obsolete if they, you know, go around removing them again. I'd rather just go for Shatter Defenses now. As far as your level 7 spells, you know when it comes to enchantment, you are still just using Greater Command through Heighten spell for the higher spell slots. It is simply way better than the other enchantment spells we get until level 9. So you can go with anything you want. To slot your enchantment spells, you can even pick something like Waves of Ecstasy. For your level 15 feet, as I said before, you can go with anything you want. I'll just go for more martial power now, so outflank and any other spells you want. For your Lore Master's Secret at 16, you can go for Rogue Secret and Opportunist, which grants you an extra attack per round. There's also Improved Evasion for more defense against enemy spellcasters. But anyway, something I like doing is picking Precise Shot now. We don't really have the space for it before, I mean, it costs point blank and then we get Precise Shot. But the reality is, it's very easy for this character to hit enemies. I mean, we target their flat-footed and touch AC with ranged spells, since we have Shatter Defenses. The True Strike spell alone grants you a massive plus 20 for any Ray spell you cast afterwards. As for why I only picked this so late, well, it's exactly at this point that spells like Hellfire Ray really start becoming amazing. Now, for level 8 spells, definitely Cemento, one of the best self-buffs in the game, and then Mind Blank. For level 17, this is when I'd get Improved Critical, and then Ray. Rays don't have high critical range unless you go with Trickster, it's only 19 to 20 with Improved Critical, but the extra damage can make a big difference. Any other spells you want here. For your Secret at 18, well, you can once again steal a spell from another class. A spell I really enjoy getting is Cleric and then Divine Power, as it's very hard to increase your stats by a luck bonus higher than plus one if you aren't a Cleric or Oracle. Now, something else you can do here is get the Firestorm from Druid. Be sure to get it from Druid instead of Cleric through Lore Master, because Druids have it one level earlier, so level seven instead of level eight, which means you can apply meta magic better to this. But understand you can pick any divine spell you want, including the ultimate healing spell in the game, Mass Heal. Now, for your level 9 spells, we actually have a lot of powerful ones here. First, without a doubt, Overwhelming Presence, which is the ultimate enchantment spell in the game, even stronger than Greater Command Halt. It works essentially the same, if the enemies fail the save, they'll just stand there doing nothing. But this spell can even work if they succeed on the save. Besides that, well, 
you'll probably want Weird 2, which is the ultimate instant death area of effect spell in the game. As I said, you can achieve pretty high DC with Weird even as an enchantment focus caster. For a level 19 feat, I would just go for Improved Critical and Bardish because the Death's Consonant weapon is really fun, but you don't really need it. Now, for more level 9 spells, Heroic Invocation, after all it is enchantment and one of the best party-wide buffs in the game. And be sure to pick Mind Blank Communal too. Ideally, you would learn the spells from Scrolls as early as level 18. Now, for your last Lore Master secret, you can either steal another spell from Cleric or Druid, or even get another Wizard feat. Since we have such extreme DC, I'll do something fun and grab Archon's Aura here. You can grab it earlier too if you want. This grants you an aura that can debuff the enemy saving throws. I just want to go all out on DC and DC debuffs. For more level 9 spells, Foresight is quite the powerful buff. Uh, the other ones are kinda underwhelming. Well alright, now let us cover Mythic progression for our Succubus Enchantress. I'm easily enough close to the Abyss is rather poor for spellcasters. You can go with Bit of Fun. As this character has a lot of skills, this will increase all of them by a plus 3 very rare circumstance bonus. On the other hand, you can also go with Instrument of Freedom to empower your allies with holy damage on hit and close to the heavens for the very useful healing ray it grants you. Now for your first mythic ability, Best Jokes. It will make your hideous laughter spell keep on hitting enemies until one succeeds on the save. It can really help early and mid game. Eventually, some of the enemies will start becoming immune to this, but by that point, you already have greater command halt. For Mythic level 2, I'd rather get a Mythic ability instead of a Mythic feat. We don't really need spell penetration so early. Through extra Mythic ability, be sure to get Abundant Casting. The more spell slots you have, the better. For Mythic level 3, improve at Abundant Casting for extra slots of level 4, 5 and 6 spells, including Greater Command Halt. For Mythic level 4, this is when I would finally get Mythic spell penetration. Now, we are finally at our Demonic Aspects which make a big difference for a spellcaster. And please remember that I already have a full demon mythic path guide, but I explain each of these in depth. So as usual, I'll try to keep it simple and short now. But anyways, the first aspect you want is of course Succubus, not only because it fits our build like a glove, but Succubus is quite helpful. It has dual uses. First, it reduces the saving throws of all enemies by a minus one penalty with scales, with your mythic ranks, the lower their will, the higher the chances of hitting your enchantment spells as they are all based on will. It even reduces their attack rolls too, so even better for tanking. Last but not least, it grants all of your party members complete immunity to compulsion and fear effects. It's pretty easy to get immunity to fear to let's say a paladin, but as far as compulsion, it can be very annoying until the late game or so. Confusion is one of the most annoying effects enemy spam on your allies, you don't want them attacking each other, so this demon aspect is really quite stacked. For mythic level 5, I'd already go for greater abundant casting, since we already have level 7 spells at this point. For your second aspect, the most important one is incubus, I mean we are both a succubus and incubus, quite thematic, plus this is the aspect that directly increases your DC, even better. For your first major demonic aspect, Coloxus is the must-have. This major aspect is actually the main reason why prepared spellcasters are much better with the demon mythic path than spontaneous ones. Well, first it grants a bonus to intelligence. This bonus is permanent, by the way. There is no major aspect that increases charisma. Second, this lets you cast your spells as a move action. Quite the unique benefit you cannot get anywhere else. What this means is you can cast multiple spells per round. This also is better for prepared casters, because when it comes to casting metamagic spells, they cast them as normal actions. Spontaneous casters take a full round action to use metamagic. So basically, with Coloxus, you not only get higher bonuses to the C, but you'll also be able to spam multiple metamagic spells per round, without having to rely on metamagic rods. For your second major demonic aspect, I would go with Baylor for the bonus to constitution, plus the actual effect from Baylor is really good. It lets all of your allies benefit from demonic rage automatically when you activate it. The normal bonuses, by the way, so the ones here, they won't gain the bonuses from the aspects. 
by the way, you can actually learn haste as a demon, even if you don't get it as a Thessalonian specialist enchanter. For mythic level 6, to me, mythic spell focus and enchantment. For another minor aspect, understand that you can only have 3 minor aspects on at level 8. For now, you'll basically just be using Succubus and Incubus. But anyways, the other one you want is Brimorak. Brimorak can actually increase spell damage by a massive amount. Every spell that deals damage in Demonic Rage will deal plus 2 points per dice rolled. As a matter of fact, around half of your Hellfire Raid damage will come just from Brimorak eventually. It really is that good. For Mythic level 7, this is when you would finally go for Ascended Element and Fire. It's at this point that we can get the Call of Fiery Things rope, which increases the damage of your fire spells by a lot, especially multiple hitting ones like Hellfire and Scorching Ray. For a third major aspect, you just want one for the stat bonus. Well, you can choose between Shadow Demon for Wisdom or Vavakia for Strength. I actually prefer Vavakia because, you know, Wisdom doesn't really matter much for us. Your other minor aspect doesn't really matter, you'll just be using Succubus, Incubus and Brimorak. You might as well get Frock for the bonus to Lore and Knowledge Skill. For Mythic level 8, this is when I would pick Mythic, Critical and then Ray. You have a few different choices, however. You can also go for Mythic Initiative or, because at this point you'll already be able to cast the Ultimate Illusion Instant Death spell called Weird, Expanded Arsenal into Illusion. This way, all of your enchantment boosts from feats, including Mythic Spell Focus, which we just picked, will also get applied to Illusion, so a plus 3 total. You'll get yet another Mythic feat at level 10, so pick 2 out of these 3. Expanded Arsenal into Illusion, Mythic Critical Ray, and Mythic Initiative. I'll be going with Mythic Critical and Ray, any aspect here. As for Mythic level 9, my preferred pick is Favored Meta Magic and Bolstered. I mean, at this point, your Hellfire Rays are already doing maximum damage at last. With access to free Bolster, well, you can have Bolstered Hellfire Rays on every spell slot. You can also pick Last Stand if you want, it's just that, as a ranged spellcaster, we aren't really going to be getting hit. Now, for your first Demon Lord aspect, what you truly want is Sokoth Benoth. It works in a similar way to the Azata Favorable Magic, ability, except, well, you get this like 50 hours later. <laughs> Anyways, the enemies have to roll twice and take the worst result. It is true that we also have persistent spell for that, but well, this gets applied for free. Persistent has a cost of increasing the spell level by plus two. As far as your last mythic feat, well, the ones I mentioned before, mythic initiative or expanded arsenal into illusion. As far as your last demon lord aspect, Nocticula, no doubt, because as a free action, we can share all of your Razor bonuses, including the Demon Aspects, to one ally of choice, thus highly increasing their power. Alright, now let us get a gear for our Succubus Enchantress. For the amulet, as with most enchantment-focused characters, it's not Valexias, you actually want the Glass Amulet of Clarity, because it will increase your mind effect in DC, so both for enchantment and the illusion spells, by a plus two. Valaxis means just plus 2 to intelligence, which is plus 1 to DC, so 1 lower than the Glass Amulet of Clarity. You can get this from Drazen at Chapter 3, just buy it from one of the merchants there. For armor, you can't really wear most armor because it will interfere with your spellcasting. Ideally, you should just go with Haramakis, and you have two choices. Divine Guidance can provide a very nice bonus of plus 4 sacred to all your saving throws, and there's also Deadly Rays, for a plus 4 insight bonus, 2 range at touch attack roll, so Hellfire and Scorching Rays. For robes, you have 2 choices. Robe of the 7 Sins if you want higher DC. This can also increase your caster level, which is great for allowing you to achieve maximum power with Hellfire Ray earlier. You can get it from the latest DLC, the Treasure of the Midnight Isles. The bonus to spell penetration is pretty good too. However, if you want higher fire damage for the ultimate Hellfire Ray possible, Go with the Call of the Fiery Things, as it will increase your fire spells by an additional 4d6. It actually applies per hit, so because you fire 3 Hellfire Rays with just one cast, it's actually 12d6 you'll be adding total. It does have a penalty to armor class, but you know who cares, you are mostly a ranged spellcaster. Earlier, you can also go with Robe of Inevitability for the bonus to spell penetration, or the Robe of Determination. For belts, it's pretty simple. 
At the start, belts that increase dexterity or strength if you want to melee a bit. Later, dexterity and constitution, but ultimately all of them. I mean, you don't have many physical perfection belts in the game, but you are the main character, so you might as well equip one of them. For gloves, it's pretty simple, Twisted, Temptation, as it will increase the DC of all your enchantment spells by a plus 2. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of gear in the game that enhances the DC of enchantment spells. No other magic school gets as many bonuses from gear. Don't really have anything special, I just have Ronex here, even though we aren't a dexterity-based character. But besides that, at the most you'll be using the boots that grant freedom of movement, or you can just buff with that. For headbands, well, at first headbands that increase intelligence, but eventually you can go for mental perfection ones for bonuses to all your mental stats, darkness caress being the best. For goggles you want the goggles of mind control, which increases the DC of your mind affecting spells by plus two, so also works for illusion. This is kind of a pain to get, you have to do Nanyo's last dungeon, which is probably the most boring area in the whole game. I might be wrong, but I think you can also get it from the latest DLC. For cloaks, at first you want cloaks of resistance, but ultimately the demon mythic cloak, because it does let your demon abilities, aspects and rage scale as if you were three mythic ranks higher, so you can go over the cap, which is why, for example, we get a plus seven stat bonus from Aspect of Colossus instead of the default maximum plus six. For rings, you have three options. Ring of Chaotic Fascination, once again, to empower your enchantment DC. You can get this by defeating the demon summoned by the Churusina NPC during the Dresden Siege at the end of chapter two. There's also the Magician's Ring. You can find multiple copies of it through the game. This one increases the DC of illusion spells instead, if you want to go for the illusion instant death ones. On the other hand, for the ultimate fire damage possible, you'll want the Ring of Pyromania. Just like all of the fiery things, it can also be applied multiple times per hellfire ray fired. For bracers, mind break, to increase the DC of your enchantment spells by yet another plus two. This can be found at chapter four, in the demon city inside the tavern after you defeat a certain pirate lady NPC. Now let us cover weapons and quick slots for our succubus. For weapons, if you want the highest DC possible, then you definitely want to go with War Mage, for a plus 2 to the DC of all your spells. Also a pretty nice bonus to spell penetration. Since you have an amazing intelligence score, however, assuming you want to melee, you definitely want to go with Death's Consonant. Notice how high our attack bonus will become, and this isn't even buffed or enchanted. Don't forget a fiery spell Weaver 2 to increase your caster level by plus one if you combine it with Robe of the Seven Sins, you reach the ultimate damage with Hellfire Ray even earlier. Now as far as quick slots, we have a lot of metamagic rods here. Grandmaster's Rod is the ultimate one. You get to empower and maximize three spells per day at the same time. So if you want the highest damage, you definitely want this. It also has quite the unique property too of allowing your spells to bypass spell resistance and magic immunity of the target. What this means is, even if the enemy is immune to mind affecting or fear, the weird instant death illusion spell will still work against them. The Devouring Lust is a must-have to the ability to maximize any spell of any level six times per rest is amazing. Plus you get it pretty early at chapter three, right when you're finally starting to get the great damage spells. A greater quicken meta magic rod just to quicken any spells you want. It's great for weird, so you instantly cast it. The same for overwhelming presence. I'd say it's not as important for a demon because we have the aspect of Coloxus to cast spells as move actions, but it can still help. The signet of House was pretty to increase any skill of choice. Jurassic X is just here if you want some extra melee damage, although for this build it's not that needed. Even though we don't get a pet with our class progression, you can still get the Bismuth Dinosaur from the Triceratops statuette if you want. And of course, high rank since you use magic device gives you access to any spell of any class, most importantly the divine spells from Cleric and Oracle for extra support if needed. There's other meta magic rods you can use too, especially if you have the latest LC, I mean you can get a lot of extra maximize poster rods and so on. Well, alright friends, so this was it for my Succubus Enchantress build. If you found this guide useful, please remember to like, subscribe, and also consider becoming a channel member as I truly appreciate your support. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends!